بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is Dawood Yaseen. I want to thank Allah for this opportunity to be here with you this evening, this 13th night of Ramadan. And I want to thank the organizers from MCC who have, um, you know, in the circumstances and the conditions that we're in right now has facilitated or is facilitating this opportunity for us to, to be together, if you will. Um, uh, nightly. It's a great endeavor and may Allah reward them for every uh, lesson that is placed up, for every uh, dua that is made, for every intention that people have. May all of that good that comes out of this gathering be in the scales uh, uh, of the organizers and the community, everybody um, um, at, at the MCC community and beyond, all the, those that, that, that are touched by this. Um, you know, as we said, this is a Ramadan in which none of us have experienced before. And, and yes, we are not able to be together physically, but Alhamdulillah, there are other benefits that we are uh, uh, enjoying. One of them for me is just the amount of time that I'm able to spend with my family. And I was, you know, kind of around the corner the other day and my daughter was talking about um, uh, in one of her classes, they started off by perhaps sharing something that you were thankful for. And one of the things that she said that she was very thankful of the amount of time that she was able to spend uh, with her family. And just, you know, alhamdulillah, I'm sure like everybody else, um, the routines of, you know, preparing a meal and, you know, having the children uh, uh, put out dates and water and other things and preparing the family to, to break the fast and breaking the fast together and reciting uh, um, you know, dua before that. It's just a real, a real blessing here. In beginning, what I want to share with you today, there's a verse in Surah Al Yunus, a verse 58, where Allah says uh, in the Quran, "Qul bi fadlillahi wa bi rahmatihi, fa bi thalika fal yafrahu huwa khairum mimma yajmaroon." This verse is uh, where Allah says, "Say to the Prophet uh, uh, in God's uh, grace." Allah's grace and in, in His mercy, let them rejoice. Qul bi fadlillahi wa bi rahmatihi. So fadl here, grace and rahma, mercy. We know that. Fabidalik, fabidalik, fal yafrahu, huwa khairun mimma yajma'un. And in that, in that grace and in that mercy, let them rejoice. Why? Let them rejoice because it is greater than what they amass. Okay? So I was looking at some tafsir on this verse. And what I found is that uh, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri and Ikrimah they said that Fadl here is Qur'an and that Rahma here is Islam. So the verse would say that, uh, tell them that from uh, this gift of Qur'an and this gift of Islam, then let them rejoice in that because those two things together are greater what they can, greater than what they can amass and here greater what they can amass meaning anything from in this dunya and then it made me think about this right it made me think about a couple of things one it made me think about my relationship uh, with quran i had a very limited relationship with quran before i was muslim um and now that I can have embraced Islam, what is that relationship like uh, after embracing Islam, right? Uh, we talked about this um, uh, last week in the lesson that uh, a reading of this Quran is not a reading like any other book. Uh, and, and at that time it was, I knew that it wasn't like other books, but I didn't have the ability for it to be the types of things that we talked about last week. It wasn't a guide in my life. It didn't establish that Allah was a sustainer in my life. It didn't do those things um, when I didn't have the key to La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, i.e. Islam, i.e. the Rahmah. And I just think it's very telling that first you get this Rahmah, you get this mercy of La ilaha illallah then you get the fadl. And what a blessing that this month that Islam legislates for us the fasting. And then it becomes, as the Prophet ﷺ says, it is a month of Qur'an. So this fadl of the Qur'an and this rahmah of al-Islam are all together now in this month uh, 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 of, of Ramadan. And that is better than anything uh, that we can amass. And, you know, this month, if we think about it from a bodily uh, a, a physical approach, if you will, a month in which this intense fasting is a type of um, uh, uh, detoxification. But that detoxification is not limited just to the body. 
It's the body. And then what does it do? It helps us, right, to cleanse our hearts, to cleanse our minds, to cleanse our bodies. For what? So we can draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, with souls that are purified, with hearts that are purified, with minds that are purified, with a body that is purified and that this experience right when we experience this that that is the special sweetness as i said of the faith during this month and that's the contrast that's the connection if you will that i'm talking about um, that without Islam, I can't have that type of relationship with the Qur'an. Or without Islam, I'm not having that type of relationship with the fasting. So Alhamdulillah, these are the things that I want to share with us that we rejoice in and that we think about these types of things. And that we think about the blessings that Allah has done, locking up uh, shaitan in this month. How is that for grace from Allah? How is that for mercy of Allah? That any types of distractions, the distractions of food, the distractions of carnal desires, the distractions um, that shaitan of his waswas, of his baseless misgivings, telling us uh, how, uh, um, you know, how wretched we are, or telling us how lazy we are, or how tell telling us, you know, these negative thoughts about us, um, that we don't have to deal with those uh, in this month. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to focus on our worship without those distractions, but at the same time, exposing ourselves, right? Exposing ourselves to ourselves in a manner that we wouldn't really uh, engage in uh, because we might think, well, a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim from that thought, or, you know, a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim, you know, I was envious in that. No, those are all realities that are inside of myself, right? And as my teacher, uh, one of our teachers said to me that uh, this month of Ramadan is like a spotlight on the nafs. It just, amplifies what is inside of us and gives us clarity to be able to see it and then we're not able to just write it off at, that these are baseless misgivings this is was was from shaitan no that's what's inside of me that is a grace that is a rahmah from allah that is a mercy from allah to know and to be able to have the type of exposure to the things um that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, 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 displeased with inside of myself to have that brought forth. That's a rahmah. But how can I know what those things are unless I know what they are, unless I'm engaging with the Quran? And that's what I talked about last week. How can I know what those displeasures are? How can I know what the rahmah um, that this month holds for me except for that I've been given the blessing and the mercy of this month of, of, uh, of, of, of Ramadan? So again, if we talk about fasting, um, designed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in taqwa, right? How do we know that? We know that through the Qur'an, so that's the fadl. And what is it? It's a rahmah in our lives. And the fasting, as we mentioned, it has a purpose. It has a goal. What's that goal? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you will gain um, taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now how we define taqwa, that's something that, that, that everyone has the ability to do. But, but for me, which... Uh, I, I like to think of it as is, is from the linguistic meaning, the linguistic meaning which it means to protect from harm, right? It means to protect from harm in that fasting is a shield from waqa to, to ward off some sort of harm, some sort of blow, some sort of a strike of something. And so what is it doing? It's, it's warding off the harmful effects of sin, protect, protecting others from ourselves uh, and protecting ourselves from ourselves. Right, and so one of the things again that the the fast does is by locking up the shayateen, then that protects us from the basis misgivings of shaitan, of which we mentioned before, the waswas of shaitan, and then these tactics, which normally are things which call us to indulge in uh, in our appetite, cause us to indulge in physical pleasures and cravings and desires in a really in an unfettered way. That that alhamdulillah, I have an entire month. Right? I have an entire month not to engage in those things. And that he wants me to, to, to ignite that fire, if you will, of the animalistic tendencies and, and that make us pursue those pleasures uh, as an end in and of themselves and not a means to a livelihood and a, a lawful way of living. That is fadl from Allah. That is rahmah from Allah that he talks about. Right? That's, the, that's, the, that's the, the grace, if you will, and the mercy, if you will. And how do we know that? We know it through the Qur'an. We know from the Qur'an how to act upright, right? How to act in a way that is pleasing uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to ward off the uh, uh, temptations 
uh, of shaitan. And again, that's out of his mercy, right? Out of his mercy, he restricts our, our access to these pleasures uh, in this month, which which are pleasures and desires. And as you know that, the breaking of the two desires, a book that Imam Ghazali talks about, um, of food and uh, 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 one's uh, sexual desires, which are two things that Allah SWT removes um, for the most part uh, of, a, of a day but while we are fasting. And so by restricting us uh, uh, of these accesses or access to these things, then we don't uh, uh, define ourselves um, by these things. We understand a higher purpose within ourselves, right? And through our fasting and our relationship that these desires become less obsessive and less animalistic and more disciplined. That's the other part of this fadl, if you will, and this rahmah, if you will, this mercy. It's to learn this type of discipline. Yes, as I said, you can uh, be fasting and have intermittent fasting and other types of fasting that is happening, but these are the benefits, the grace, the mercy, and the blessings that really we have to rejoice about when we think about this. Um, so again, when this month um, you know, is over and we find ourselves back um, and this, as I said, this training is over, and we're back in that relationship with Shaitan, right? We have to think about um, that, alhamdulillah, this training, just like one trains and their body becomes toned, that one has trained and physically um, they have restricted the pathways. Uh, spiritually, they have restricted the pathways and the entrances and the doors and the buttons that Shaitan likes to, to push to get us agitated, uh, you know, not trusting in Allah, having anxiety, you know, these types of things. Uh, very clearly, Allah says in, in one way, how can we avoid that? Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la tatari khutawat shaytan O you who believe, do not follow the footsteps of shaytan. Uh, so, okay, so what does that mean? Don't follow in the footsteps of shaytan. Again, I went back to the tafsir and looked at some of the things. It is disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that some of the scholars say. Disobedience to Allah, lewd, uh, lewd acts and lewd talk. Um, you know, things that are displeasing to Allah that are made clear to us through the Qur'an. And this is what I was talking about last week when I said that once this Qur'an is established in our life as a guide, then it sets out for us the moral uh, path. It sets out for us the uh, principles that we bring into our lives, ethics that we bring into our lives, and that's what we want to live on. And that's what I'm saying that without this relationship, ship of Islam, then the Quran does not have that type of relationship in my in our lives. And I'm telling you that from experience. I had, although a very limited relationship with the Quran, I did have a Quran. I bought a Quran before I was Muslim and I read that and it did not have that type of impact on me to push me into those areas or to push myself, to challenge myself in those areas and to think about it. But now, alhamdulillah, bi fadlihi wa bi rahmatihi, right? Allah has opened up this Quran. Allah has brought uh, uh, me to the light of Islam. And then all of that, I have an entire month in which, um, you know, this, this Islam, I can uh, contemplate and think about and, uh, and, and just to give gratitude, you know, to, to, to be of this Ummah of the Prophet Islam, and to have this book to read and to have all of the gifts that are, that are uh, present itself from that way. So those are some of the reflections uh, that I wanted to share. Um, and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings benefit from this. But at the end of the day, like I said, thinking of this Quran as the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives, inside Ramadan and outside of Ramadan. And also thinking of Islam as a rahmah from Allah in our lives. And again, unless uh, you know, one understands the, the, the intensity uh, of life without faith, um, it really will uh, uh, aid aid you to understand what a mercy it is to to be able to call ourselves Muslims. And so, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bless everyone in the remaining days and nights of Ramadan. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bless uh, MCC community and continue to pour down His fadl and His rahmah uh, on this community. Uh, and with that, um, Alhamdulillah, I bid you a good night, and may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Um, bless your ibadah and the remainder uh, um, of this month and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring you incredible blessings uh, on this evening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.